today um, I want to uh, do first impressions on the uh, Sonos Roam. Um, this arrived on Tuesday, on April 20th. Um, that was the launch day. Uh, I guess everybody got their Sonos Roams. If you had a pre-order, it was likely that you would have got it on Tuesday, um, which is great. Uh, the wireless charger that you optionally can buy uh, didn't arrive until Thursday or Friday um, and there's actually neither here nor there. So um, first things first, comparison Sonos Roam versus Sonos Move, massive improvement uh, in size because traveling with this on an airplane or a bus or a train is not practical, it's, it's big. Um, so this little speaker here, that's a, that's a big advancement for light, like traveling with light baggage, with light, uh, yeah, with a backpack or whatever. You wouldn't want to have that if you're just around with a backpack. The other thing they've changed is the Sonos Move. Um, you either have it on wireless in your Sonos environment or you have it on Bluetooth um, and then you use it like that only and you have to switch around from one to the other forth and back um, so not a big inconvenience but yeah whatever the Sonos Roam both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi are always active so you can connect to it to, with Bluetooth at any given time if you disconnect from Bluetooth again it will be still on your wireless it will work as a normal speaker that's a that's a nice change in what they've done um, it comes with a, with, a, with a cable here on the back, USB-C. Um, the cable is, let's see, we have it here. So this is an angled connector here. So um, you don't need it. Honestly, no, you don't. Now, so this, this Sonos Move is comparable to Sonos Play 3 and it is fantastic when it comes to sound. Um, but it's a big lump. The Sonos Roam, on the other hand, comparable to a Play 1, maybe not quite, but it's not far off. And for what it is, it's actually pretty impressive. And um, the thing then where I figured is because there's a wireless charging option with the wireless charging pad, um, I figured that they probably just use standard QI charging. It wouldn't make any sense to uh, implement something proprietary. So what I did was, when it arrived, all I did, I'll take my weather station out of the way here, all I did, stuck it on here. There you go, QI charging, perfect, works. Um, that's the standard IKEA lamp with the QI charger built in, the sonar speaker charges on that, no hassle there. So don't need to pay for this at all. There is no reason to buy the wireless charger. Uh, it is nice with the magnetic base, but um, to, uh, to, to pay the money for it, uh, unless you have a no QI charger at all, or you just want a charger for it in a specific place, fair enough. Otherwise, really not. Um, it's not needed at all. So that's whatever what that is. Grant, um, so first first impressions then. So it arrived on Tuesday and the first thing that happened was uh, Spotify Connect did not work. And I had updated my Spotify on Monday the 19th and so I, I, I was sure I was on the, on the latest version. Nothing, absolutely nothing. The next thing I then tried, I tried to start music from the Sonos app, um, Spotify, Plex, YouTube music, whatever. Nothing worked, absolutely nothing. Um, I connected it with my, um, with my Motorola here, Bluetooth, um, dropped every few seconds. Um, it would just, there would be gap in the music. So it's open. So I dug out the Note 9 and I worked flawlessly on Bluetooth. So, okay, that's, that's a problem with 
the Motorola, and that's fine, okay. Dug out the iPhone 7 that I have for testing purposes and for uh, <laughs> true <laughs> for true play. Um, unfortunately, there is no Android solution to that. So, uh, and since uh, Sonos isn't hasn't come up with a solution that you can buy a microphone of them that you could use for doing poor to play with something else than um, than an iPhone or an iPad. I have an iPhone 7 knocking about for that sort of purpose. So it's good for testing too. Um, so AirPlay uh, takes twice as long to connect to the room than to let's say the Move or, or Sonos 1, about two minutes and then it starts playing. And then after, five, six minutes, I just stopped playing. I was like, what's going on here? That's like, that's not great. Now, it was too late in the day to ring uh, support. So um, I just put the speaker away and um, rang them next day, Wednesday, and um, went through and obviously, uh, certain things had started working. I could, I could start music from the Sonos app. So I figure maybe the firmware update that I put on um, just as it arrived, maybe that wasn't quite finished or was still doing things in the background. Don't know. But either from very former shape, all the ups out of the um, uh, of the Sonos app that worked. Um, AirPlay worked. There was no problem there anymore. Uh, my Motorola had gotten a firmware update that morning and I had no issues with Bluetooth with that either anymore. It was a bit like, okay. Um, and then we found out that Spotify has actually um, pushed another update between Tuesday and Wednesday. So update that again, all of my Spotify issues got uh, disappeared. So literally everything is working now oh yeah on tuesday one thing i could do was i could start music on a different room and then combine the room with that room and the room would be playing but when i disassociated disassociated the other speakers um when disassociated the other speakers from the room the room would also stop playing so either way all of that had, had rectified itself by wednesday so the only thing that I since then actually noticed on Wednesday and since still am bothered by is that when I go and I turn off the speaker and I just let it sit, it will drain itself. After 12, 14 hours, it will start blinking red, orange, um, that the battery is about to be empty. Now. Sonos reckons I might have a faulty unit. Um, so um, still talking to them about that. And obviously if that turns out to be the case, we'll replace the, the speaker. Beyond that, uh, I have to say quite impressed. It is a nice product. Um, it is currently the cheapest Sonos speaker uh, in the portfolio if you discard the Symphonisk. Um, that's there. So, if you if you if you if you ignore that it exists, and if you ignore the lamp speakers from IKEA, then the Rome is currently the cheapest Sonos speaker that you can buy, and it is the most versatile. So, well, where? And I'll be back with a more in-depth review um, in a few days, I guess. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, like and subscribe. And um, I'll see you for another one.